Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Per Martinson, and I have the opportunity to talk to you about the technology opportunities and challenges that we at Avenod Group sees that we as an industry have ahead of us. When we started Avenod back in 2001, we did it with an ambition and a vision that it should be as easy to book a private jet as an airline ticket. That's a vision that we still have. Today, sometimes we refer to it as click to clunk. In other words, you click a mouse and everything is digital until the aircraft door closes with a clunk. Every year, we are getting closer and closer and closer to this vision, but it has taken a lot of time. Because it also means that it's transformation going on in the industry that is supporting this evolution. We're going to look back at 20 years and then predict a little bit where we think the industry is going and what we are doing in order to drive it. If we look back, there has been some revolutionary things happening. The mainframes of the 90s, the computers of the early 2000s, can compete with what we now carry around in our pockets in terms of computing power, memory, functionality. For those that remember first time they were on, online, they will remember the sound that, <laughs> that this generation of today don't know. I remember when I get, got a 64.4 kilobit modem and I thought internet was fast. Now we sit again with high speed internet in our pockets and over there you have Starlink that gives you worldwide megabit connectivity wherever you are talk about a revolution. When it comes to private jets, the hardware that we fly, I don't think we can talk about a revolution yet. It has been small incremental steps in an evolution. The, the, we are flying slightly faster, slightly longer. Um, we are maybe a little bit bigger, but in general, the aircraft haven't changed. When it comes to the small hops in the future, I do think that we are going to see the EVTOL revolutionizing that component, but not for the larger distances. But uh, it will be EVTOLs coming to assist us in the future. So, when we then look at business aviation, there has been a couple of trends, buzzwords going around. So let's have a look and, and what have it been and where do we think it's going? So from the get-go when we started Avenue 20 years ago, and still from time to time, it's empty legs, empty legs, empty legs. People looking to create unique opportunities that are going to revolutionize the business by reducing these empty moments from 30% down to 10%. There has been companies built up around it, funding, but they have all crashed and burned. I don't know how many tech entrepreneurs have reached out to me during the last 20 years saying that they are going to do an Uber for private jets. The typical scenario is a tech millionaire sits in an FBO, looks out and see the aircraft parked, talks to a pilot and asks them, how often do they fly in here 300 hours a year? It's like, oh, this is a logistics problem. They don't realize the complexity. I do the analogy most of the time to say that Uber for private jets would be like you on your Uber app today. Instead of requesting a black car, you would say, I want a BMW X7, 2023 model. It should be brown leather interior. I want was sparkling water and peppermint Tic Tac. And I want it outside in five minutes for a fixed price. It doesn't work that way. And of course, I'm oversimplifying it, but at least it gives the picture. You could not deliver on it. Another thing that has come up during the last five years, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain in aviation. For air charter, we still do not believe that there is a use case for blockchain, crypto, etc. 
There's a reason why most people do not work with crypto when it comes to air sharding. It's high amounts, you don't know who it is. There's anti-money laundering, there's terrorist uh, financing laws, etc., etc. But empty legs, Uber for private jets, cryptocurrency payments, all called for revolutionizing. But in the reality, what they have done is just to try and create marketing stunts at many times to attract the end client. Because on the background, it has been hardworking people doing most stuff manually. It has not been digitized. It hasn't been a unique opportunity. It's just they're trying to attract the end client in a different way. But there are companies that are trying to innovate that have had fundamental impact on the industry. Uh, the one that I most often think about, having had a substantial change in the last 10 years, is actually Jet Smarter. Because they created a whole new type of travel, the seat sharing model. And you might say whatever you feel, that it's good or it's bad, but I think we can all agree that it has drastically changed and create new opportunities. Some have succeeded, some have not and the jury is still out on others. But they did change the concept and create a different offering. The other week, um, I think it's two weekends ago, I was actually looking at Bissav Mems, where he was also rallying against revolutionizing or people using that word. And he says, I think only Avenode and JetSmarter can use the term revolutionize. Since while far from perfect, they were are disruptive in some capacity. I look at that and I feel humbled in a way. Sometimes it's good to have an exterior, external person give a view. We like to think about ourselves as revolutionizing. I'm not sure if we are or were. I take it as a challenge to continue to drive change. But we want to continue to drive change and innovation. The only way we do that is with our partners, operators, brokers, technology providers. So, where do we think things are going and where do we believe that we play a role in partnering up with you guys? Today, this industry suffers from a lot of inefficiencies. It's a very sequential end client to broker, broker to operator, operator to FBO, operator to crew. Uh, thankfully, I don't have facts illustrated here because we have gotten rid of facts, but it's text messages, it's WhatsApp, it's phone calls, it's endless of emails. And this is just, I mean, to book the flight and perform the flight. And this wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for all the changes for the flexibility that we offer the clients or for the complexity to organize all the logistics because once something changes, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Also, if it was just a closed loop with a few people that you were dealing with, it was just your own end client and you had a dedicated aircraft and it was your, uh, your, only your own pilots that you have to deal with, maybe you could solve it. But this industry, while small, is still global and still fragmented enough that communication becomes an even bigger problem. Even more so, I mean, privacy, data privacy, GDPR, all of these things start to become more and more important for us. How often do we not see that people email their passports across, the passenger manifests, credit card information in a very unsecure manner? We see so often that credit card pictures front and back side to go, together with a government ID is emailed across and stored in an Outlook folder. That's just liability, credit card fraud waiting to happen. So why do we need to be focused in this way? Why isn't it that like with the other industries, you create an environment where you can share the data securely between the parties that actually need it. So when an end client needs to update their passenger manifest to upload a document, why don't you make sure that that is then downloaded electronically securely to an operator or to the broker who needs it? Or when the trip sheet is updated with the latest information, why should they email it across? Why shouldn't you have direct instant online access to it? Of course, safeguarded, 
but automatically available for the people that needs it. Or as a broker, how many times haven't you called the operator to ask, is the aircraft really in position? Why not get the same acknowledgement that the operator do? Sure, it requires trust to share information about a trip. But that's at the end of the day what we all want to do. We want to work efficiently and having trusted professional relationships. That's a world we believe is coming in terms of connectivity, communication, which we think will have a huge impact on how we as an industry operate. So what are the trends, the big trends that we see? Number one is really exciting. And that is innovation, it's at an all-time high. And what we mean with that is the number of companies that are starting up with tech ideas. And what was nice is there was a trend where everyone was just doing a copycat of one or another, not really innovating. And now we're seeing that more and more people are creating completely new ideas based on technology. And we have a privilege that we are probably one uh, of the first companies they reach out to because they are looking for data, they're looking for go-to-market strategy. There is a client that they are working very close with that says, well, you need to have an integration with Avinode, or have you talked to Avinode Group about how you can leverage their platform to be accelerated? We love this entire tech sphere that's building up because we recognize there's so many good ideas out there that brokers and operators can benefit from creating new value that can be monetized. I touched on it a little bit, connectivity. APIs is a must. There is no longer a world where standalone softwares exist. You need as the owner, as a broker, an operator, own your data. Have the right to integrate with whoever you want because it's your data. You shouldn't feel restricted to use it and plug it in where you feel needed. Again, I mean, APIs is an essential part of the Avenue Group. On a weekly basis, we have between 8 to 10 million API calls from third-party softwares going to our platforms. And that's something that continues to increase. So 8 to 10 million a week, so say 40 million a month. To put it in per perspective, the platform has 1,600 members, half brokers, half operators, representing about 4,500 aircraft. On any given month, there is 100,000 charter trips being sourced or requested, and in total about a million charter requests being sent every month. But APIs are exploding. So whoever you're working with, make sure that your software providers think about APIs, that you have the right and the ownership of the data. They should have an open API philosophy because connectivity is just going to be more and more important. We are all expecting more as consumers. At times we are spoiled or ungrateful because things that were great in iOS 14 now seems standard or table stake. We always want the upgrade. We want something new. We value the new features for a month or two, then we are asking for more and more and more. Your clients are also being exposed to all the advancements that happens around them in their day-to-day -day life. So even though I don't believe in a whole digital, only digital experience for our industry, but, that's, but I, what I strongly believe in is that you need to have a technology-supported human touch experience. Why is it that you can control your thermostat at home or you can book a meal on a commercial airline ticket and I cannot update the passenger manifests on my private jet? And it all depends on what the end client wants to have, what sort of experience, but at least give them the choice. So we strongly believe that regardless of the user experience, the customer experience, technology will play a role. So whatever app, mobile optimized page that will play a huge part in the service delivery. I tried to order coffee today at Starbucks. I love uh, online order. Why stand in line, right? Always faster. 
Put in order. Walk over there. No coffee. 68 people in front of me in the mobile order. But what was nice was, 25 minutes later, of course I went back to the booth, it pings. Oh, your coffee is now available, you walk over, it's freshly brewed, didn't need to stand around. So, all these technology, why wouldn't you ping your clients or ping the broker or ping the operator with the up-to-date information? Why having to rely on manual calls, so just sit around, stand around? So, that's sort of the setting the context for what we are covering today. I'm now going to ask some of my colleagues to come up for uh, starting off a panel conversation about some of the areas we are, I've touched on. Again, I'm sure you have questions, so please keep them. Uh, and then as soon as we are wrapping up the panel, we're going to open up for questions to them as well as myself.